Hey guys, so I'm going to be talking about this new game, Magatsu Maharet. It first released in Japan April 23, 2019 for both iOS and Android. Tomorrow, 10-28 is the global release date for Magatsu Maharet for both iOS and Android. But first, let's take a look at the story and the history of the game. So if you went to the their website, and first we're going to take a t look at the world. Several years later, regardless of race, in a harsh world under the threat of the light. There's the prehistory, the lost races, 294, age of empire, that's what the AE means. The great fire of the lost capital, capital shift. 295, age of empire, new capital. 314, age of empire, 10 lights. Prehistory. The lost races in the distant past before the empire's history began. The world was once a melting pot of various races. However, once the light first fell, the world began to slowly but surely collapse. The once lively races were driven to a corner, lost the ability to resist the light and were lost forever. Now only the ruins left by these lost races remain and lie sleeping across the world. So these are just some pictures, it looks pretty cool. It's like... mythical. <laughs> 294 Age of Empire. That's where the Age of Empire right here. The Great Fire... Great Fire of the Lost Capital. Capital ship. The threat of the light which had become a fairy tale in 294 Age of Empire. The Empire at the time caused a great large fire which shallowed, swallowed up the entire capital. The survivors looked for a safe haven once more, abandoned the capital they grew up in, and were forcefully moved to the new capital. This event, called the Great Fire of the Lost Capital, became a large stain in, on the history of the Empire. 295 Age of Empire, New Capital The land which became the new capital to the south of the Lost Capital or the plains called the water source of the empire. However, the people which arrived at the new capital were for the forgotten children of the previous emperor, along with a population short of 5 million frail and weak citizens. The frail, regen the frail, the frail generation which were raised unaware of the threat of the light under the ground caused protection of the empire. Three fourteen, Age of Empire, ten lights. Twenty years after the great fire of the lost capital, ten lights fell upon this unsuspecting world, silently depriving people of their lives. North of the north, the new capital, where workers of charcoal reside, called the slums. Since the great fire, people who have lost their place have slowly drifted towards this area, increasing the population. Politics could not save those in poverty, and and as if chasing something, the first light descended. So the f the light is bad, right? Is that what you're telling? Is that what you're saying? Because the ten lights. Where is it? The ten lights fell upon this unsuspecting world silently depriving people of their lives so the lights are bad yeah that's definitely a slum looking even in real world it looks like that in places around the world retaliate against the fate of destruction eliminate the threat of the light so the light is bad and the dark is what good We'll find out. Recruit mobile corps members. It's going to be available for iOS and Apple. So let's look at the prologue. The light was the start of the despair. Ten bolts pierced through the light, the sky on that day. The first light in several million lives 
one third of the empire was destroyed. One light killed that many, several million lives, one light, and now there's ten of them. The prophecy's late garnet table tablet foretells the beginning of the end for this world. It, the world which has been pierced by ten lights, a world heading towards destruction. Warit. Warit. Did I say that right? The only organization to fight against that light, Mobile Corps, joined six different units. So there are six characters, um, races, right? Yeah, six different units in this game. It's called Units. Others is like races or faction and stuff. So um, there's a warrior, there's a knight, a priest, hunter, gunner, and wizard, which are all pretty much self explanatory. A warrior is kind of like a damage dealer, but frontline. Yeah, melee. A knight, I'm assuming, is going to be like a tank, like absorbing damage, etc. Priest is like the healer. Hunter, it's kind of like um, you command like pets or nature kind of thing because you're a hunter, you know. Gunner, it's more like guns and weaponries. And wizard, it's like magic and sorcery, all that stuff. So these are an example of one of each, right? Yep, it is. The first warrior is Le Leocardio. Strong physical power to deal large damage to your foes. Next is the Paladin, the Knight. The Knight unit with standing enemy attacks, a defender protecting your allies. Yep, Laurent. The tank that takes all the damage. The Priest. Healing or recovery from special statuses. Ignis. Hunter. Identifying enemy weak points and strength and allies directs the flow of battle to the advantage. Gerald. Gerald? Or Gerald? Gerald. I think it's Gerald. Looks pretty cool. That's a. That's not. It's one of those. Like a anime from like Naruto. Those. Shuriken <laughs> and the gunner continuous combo through gunfight gunfire leading towards a faster awakened status Yasmin a faster awakened status more like debuffs right that's the thing I can think of like debuffs and last but not least is the wizard his name is Jurgen it looks pretty badass, especially that staff. It looks like um, like the planetary and the the black the black balls. That's kind of scary. Wizard elemental and area attacks strongest magic magical attack. Yeah, of course. And I feel like these are gonna be the main characters that you wanna have like in game. So if you have a warrior, try to get this guy. Leo Cardio. If you want, if you want to get a knight, get Laurent, and etc. etc. for all of them. Well, I think what I'm gonna start with is most likely a priest. Uh, mm, priest hunter and maybe the wizard. I think those are my top three that uh, I'm thinking of starting first. So let's get on with the characters. Metal Technica Company. These are the protagonists. Awaken after the first light's impact as an awakener. Together with the mobile corpse, they fight against the light. So this is what we can choose first. You can choose to be a guy or a girl. They look pretty cool. And of course they're blonde. And below them is the characters, the different um, 
units. So the warrior is Licardio, Laurent is the knight, Ignace is the priest, Gerald is the hunter, Yasmin is the gunner, Jorgen is the mage. Percy and Sa Sadie, we don't know yet what they are. Percy, the same as the protagonist, and is the newest member of the Intelligence Bureau. A support role, all support roles, probably like a priest or a mage or even a, a gunner. Because those are support roles. And maybe even a tank, but she doesn't look like a tank. More probably like debuffs. Or slow, you know, slow people, or poison, etc. It's always bright and energetic in charge of the brightening room. Has a strong grasp of all the rumors across the empire, and it's quite an information expert. So she's, she gathers intel. Pretty cool. Here's some voices. <laughs> Voice too. Well, there's more. And then there's Sadie, which we haven't seen yet. Due to heavy injuries suffered in the past in a previous mission and unable to fight, she transferred to the Information Bureau. Has a serious personality which allows no room for leniency. She is quick to show no mercy. Currently, she is the right hand of Professor Faust. Just the way they talk, it's kind of calming. And then Sophia. Mawakop's Soul Research Bureau. Originally an orphan but recognized by her for her talents, was able to receive support and skip grades through the Empire's highest academic center and graduate at the top of her class. After graduating, she became the youngest person to enroll in metal technical company and conducts her research every day. I wonder what she's, what character she's gonna be like. She looks like a support type. Mr. Magutsu? Hey, this is the character. This is the name of the, the game. So he must be very important, or maybe that's their logo, <laughs> or their mascot. Mr. Magatsu, Mobile Corps Public Relations Department, Metal Technical Company's mascot character. Yeah, it's a mascot, I knew it. I just had a feeling. Born to artificial means via an egg of unknown origins. Professor Foss picked his name out of a lottery of several names. Okay, so it's just random. The three names combined were Michael, Galgali, Zarathustra. <coughs> However, because it was too long, the first letter of the name was used and he became Mr. Magatsu. Magatsu. I'm not sure how I see Magatsu in that. The first letter of the name. Which name? There's three names. <laughs> okay, but anyways. And there's no voice though. And Foss. Melo, Melo Technical Company President. And Laboratory Department Chief Foss. Heavily interested in soul energy as well as soul technology which uses it is a realist who pours his blood and sweat into his research and is not above inhuman actions for the sake of research. Hmm. I don't know, it kind of sounds like a, a doctor. Maybe I've watched too much uh, Korean drama or those kinds. Warit Empire. Are these bad guys? Or is Dardy or Dardy's are allies? Emelian, Hals, Ewald, and Sig. Emil Emelin, Emelin. Due to political reasons, she was appointed as the Emperor's henceforth since birthday, a natural born noblewoman. 
She has never met the emperor, but respects what she has heard about him. She has no complaints with the distance they have as partners. Was, was swallowed up when the first light descended and her fate was distorted. Let's hear her voice. I feel like I've, I've heard that voice before. Next is... Well, there's a lot. Hals. <coughs> Assembly member, Hals. A young yet quickly promoted politician has a knack for politics and a large authority. Using his wisdom and gentle attitude, he has been able to steer the hearts of many. Also has the ruthlessness to discard anything for his con conviction. Looks like he he's young. He looks sophisticated. I don't know. I, I feel like his, his face doesn't match his voice. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. Hal, so his guy's, this guy's name is Hal. Next is Ewald. Cheval, Keval, Cavaliers? Cavaliers? Ewald, born in a noble family which had produced Cavaliers for generations. He became a Cavalier without any self-doubt. Despite his patriotic attitude and pride as a Cavalier, he is arrogant and violent. Has had a one-sided love for Laurent for a long time and is never given a time of day. Let's hear his voice. Oh. I, I don't know what to do with the voices. Sig is another Cavaliers. Sig is born as a noble but hates the conservative attitude of other nobles. A young man who has who can logically analyze things with clarity to change the current Cavaliers. He is currently trying to improve relations with the mobile corps. Oh, uh, they're appearing characters. Are these going to be like in the future? Or maybe they're already in there. Oh, Phantom. I love that name, Phantom. He looks pretty badass. A boy who appeared right before the first light fell is incredibly dissatisfied with nobles and the way of life and was about to give Emmeline a taste of reality, but whoa. I feel like there's a story here that we're missing. This guy is interesting. Next is Steph. Shop employee. Mobile Cops Corporated Operated Shops Employee has a bright smile and a warm way of talking. Heals all the course member who sees her. There are also customers who run to the store just to see her smile. Yeah, she has a nice smile. Steph. And next we have Yoan. Looks like a priest, like a pope. Central Church Pope, yep. Yoan, the head of the only religion recognized by the Empire, the Central Church. He is the key to the Empire's beliefs. He preaches for people to keep a calm heart and accept their fates. He definitely sounds like a pope. Next we have um, Hasi. A brave and daring young man is sensitive to the smell of money 
has cunning methods of dealing things. However, he has also a loud personality and a strong sense of beauty, which has earned him the respect of his comrades. So he's like a gunner thief. He looks like a, a thief. A thief character. I don't know what they're saying, so I can't translate. Black robed man. A mysterious man who appeared during a mission. He seems to be looking for something, says no words, and it is not clear if he has any objective. Well, if you look like that, you have an objective. Very suspicious. If he's, he doesn't say much, he, he sure does talk a lot. <laughs> Next we have Goat Goat Half Goat Half Dragon God of Garu Hin Range. Is she a god? She looks like a god because of the the local the local dot thing in her forehead. A survivor of the dragon tribe who lives in the Giruhin range and has been around for around 2,000 years. Yep, she's definitely a god if you live that long. A calm and collected thinker who is greatly concerned about the potential extinction of humanity. She also finds hope in the awakeners who survived to fight the light. So we are the awakeners. Goat health. No, she looks interesting. She looks powerful too. And last, is that our last one? Yep. Last but not least, Camille. A photographer. Uh, he's a news reporter. The Empire's hottest selling newspaper. Daily Sarge reporter. As a reporter, he has high, cogn high cognitive no, cognition and problem solving skills. They messed up problem solving <laughs> a spelling. He works hard to spread the truth to the people. Camille. Camille, so that's Camille, guys. And do you have any more? Yep, that's about it for all the, the characters. Did we do... Yep. And the system, we cannot see it yet. So yeah, guys, I am looking very excited i'm very excited for tomorrow here's the release date um gmt plus eight i'm, I'm not sure what <laughs> what time zone is that but here you can see it for yourself the global opening global server openings 10:28. so i'll hope i see you guys there i'm definitely gonna be there hope you guys enjoyed this video like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow for the release of the global server. Peace.